basketball court. And we were in seats at the five and six on the floor. I guess the second fewest field goal attempts to get 50. I've been saying it. It's pure. Everything he does is pure. You know, it looks so easy tonight. I look up, he got 10 points, and it felt like he only took two shots, you know, the first quarter. And I told Seth, I'm like, damn, I didn't know he had, he had it cooking like that. And he, I seen it in his eyes to start the game. You know, he was, uh, he wanted to play better last game. Uh, you know, so he came out here tonight and um, wanted to impact the game from the start. And he led us all night, hit big shots when we needed to. And it was just an incredible, incredible performance, man. It's something you got to, like, younger players should watch this game and learn what it takes to score at that level from at a five, as 5'10", five, 5'11", five, um, for him to score that easy. I mean, that was just a master class. How big is this for the Oh, I mean, it's always good to get a win. I mean, we want to definitely want to play better than we did in the second half, but it's always good to get a W. And, uh, you know, we fight for our lives every game, you know, to try to, Getting to play all stand and play in, you know. So we know how important every game is. So it's good to get a W. Obviously, you played in a ton of real playoff games. So does it feel like the playoffs are kind of already starting for you guys when you look at where you guys are in the standings and where you want to get to? To be honest, I think early in the season I felt that atmosphere. I mean, teams were starting to use playoff type coverages to guard me, you know. So I felt like that intensity to start, and I feel like. Our team brings the best out of other teams. So as you're preparing to play us, you know, and your coaches and staff is going to make sure you're ready to play every day against us. So every game has felt like that, to be honest, you know. And, uh, you know, from the outside, the fans' perspective and you guys' perspective, it's like, you know, time to get it going. And every game just has some pressure to it. But as professionals, we felt that early on. We want to be great every day. Can you guys tell him how many he got? No. Uh, at the end, I seen uh, Seth got a wide open three when Kai had 48. And on my mind, I'm like, you're going to dagger him at the house. You know, you get to knock that three down and he swung it back to Kai. And then I looked up, like, oh, he had 48, you know. So it's one of those scores that um, his shots are not like, you know, super explosive. It's just that he's steady throughout the whole game. And then you look up and he has a big score in that. So that shows you how truly gifted and talented and special. Hard work and kind of reads. Obviously, you guys are without Ben, but it seemed like tonight everybody kind of was doing what they were supposed to. I mean, is this kind of the blueprint for the most part of the first half in terms of? I mean, every team can say that after they play well. Like, this is how we want to play. You know, that's what we need. This is how we need to play going forward. Um, so it's about consistency and, you know, being able to adapt to any matchup and line up. And uh, I, like, I like where our mind is right now. So our coaching staff is doing a good job. Even though we lost the last two games, I think we've been putting ourselves in a position to win basketball games, so it's good to, to get one tonight. Kevin, you've obviously gone before in the past, but what do you think it'll be like this time around going against James? I don't think it'll be any different than a regular game. Um, when I was younger, 22, 23, you, know, you see a guy that just got traded, and Emotions everywhere, you know. You don't know how it's, how you gonna approach the game because it feels like a big game because you're playing against one of your former teammates. But it is what it is. Man. It's another game for us. I mean, we're looking to win, and they're looking to win and move up in the stands for us, and they're looking to maintain where they are. So I know James was here, and um, we built some relationships with a couple people here. But at the end of the day, we we're looking to go out there and hoop. As you look back, you know, in the last couple of weeks, you think there was anything. You guys could have said or done differently that would have changed his mind and wanted to make him want to stay here long term. No, no. I mean, when you look at it, try to look at it from his perspective. You know, you look up and Kai's not playing, and then I'm injured. He hasn't won a championship before, so he's looking at his, his you know, he's 32 years old, I guess, and looking at himself and wanting to make a decision to get on a team that can kind of get him to that, to that contending, you know, being one of the last team standing. So if you look at it, if, at it from his perspective, you, know, you, just, you just say it is what it is. You can't really control how somebody feels when you're thinking like that. Hopefully stay healthy and their team stay healthy. And we stay healthy and 
we have a great year, they have a great year, we can just move on from this, you know. Do you see anything extra with Ben at the Bears? <coughs> Austin, why are you so worried about Thursday and what it could look like in the environment? Absolutely not. That's one of those things he's going to have to experience for himself. I can't go over there. Nobody's going to hold his hand. I'm sure it's going to be some personal attacks. It's going to be some, um, you know, something that might, you know, some words that may trigger you as personally. But that's just how fans are. They want to get under our skin. They want to, you know, let their voices be heard. Part of the experience of coming to an NBA game is the heck, you know. Some people don't even enjoy basketball. They just like you know, their lives are so shitty that they, they get to just aim it at other people, you know. So it's easy to kind of get that release at a basketball game. So Ben understands that, and I'm um, sure some stuff may be funny. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. But at the end of the day, we realize that life is amazing. We play the game of basketball for a living, and a little bit of trash talk is what it is. You and he never asked you about like when you get back. Like, did he ask you about OKC? Okay, so like, no, I mean, this one of those that things was... you just got to experience for yourself. You know, embrace it. You know, all the greats have been through being called the worst names in the history of the book. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, the good thing about it is that we get a chance to perform and shut the people up. You know, and it's a it's a fun dynamic to with fans and players because they really do love us <laughs> at the end of the day, but. A part of their job is to, you know, be fans, be fanatics, you know, be radical about how they, about the game and about their team. So we all understand this as professionals. Some of the stuff may go overboard, but at the end of the day, ain't nothing going to happen to us, I feel. You obviously lived it at OKC and went back to the Warriors. What is it like being in the middle of that kind of firestorm? Uh, it's a different it's a different situation because I got to play and shut the people up every time I hit a jump shot. You know, man, it was good to. But Ben doesn't have that opportunity right now. You got to just sit there and just take <laughs> a bunch of just people just being childish, you know, throwing this sauce at his way because he didn't want to play basketball for them no more. I mean, it's a funny, it's a it's funny when you look at it, you know, the big picture. You see it, you see what it really is, but. That's just the sport we play. That's the, that's the profession we play. I mean, we in. You guys making forty million dollars a year. You can take that for forty eight for a couple of hours. You know, and I'm sure Ben has that approach. What do you think the atmosphere is going to be like? It'll be loud. I'm sure Philly fans and people who are watching the game and media think this is somewhat of a button rivalry. So I imagine it's going to feel that way. You know, Philly has some of the best sports fans in the world. And uh, it's only good that they come in and show support to their team, but also want to come see how we look, too. So, you know, it shows that we got some talent over here as well. You don't think, uh, just judging from what you said, I mean, considering the proximity and how good both rosters are and the way the whole trade went down, you don't think you could have to make another rivalry until you got meet them in the playoffs? Yeah, we played like three, four years in the playoffs against each other. Yeah, until we do that, I don't even think playing a team one time in the playoffs is a rivalry. Maybe not even two. I want to say three or four times and that make you a rivalry. And the players got to stay on the same team. There's not a lot of continuity when it comes to personnel um, or coaching staffs in this league for you to have any type of rivalries. You know? so, uh, but like I said, this is entertainment. And a lot of fans and media guys, want to, people want to look at it that way and have a good time and enjoy yourself watching this play. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Kevin, I saw Batman. I know it's two movie reviews now. Was it good? It's long. Did you check out the first episode of, uh, of uh, Winnie Time? Uh, no, I, it's on my list. Oh, Jerry.